Hi, everyone. I'm Amor I'm Carthy, and I'm the founder of Education Innovations. And tonight we're going to do our first live webinar, and it's, gonna be, it's entitled, How Do I Get Into College? So I really wanted to discuss um, and share with people how do you get into college, because that's one of the biggest things on people's minds um, when they get into high school, especially when they get into their um, upperclassmen years when they are a junior and senior. Uh, just really got into thinking about this. Um, you'll see my Spelman gear. I went to Spelman College and I was one of the, I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. So it was, it was a little bit tricky because I didn't know who to talk to, to find out how to get into co to college or the steps. Um, eventually, I did figure it out. I spoke to counselors. I spoke to um, people that I knew that went to college, but no one really shared the actual steps. So that's what I'm going to do today um, with you all. Um, I see that we have some people who are joining, so welcome. Um, and this is a webinar on how to get into college. And I basically am starting this or trying to do these web uh, series because I was thinking about all the uh, questions that I had when I was trying to get into college. And, you know, I, I was a nerd. Most people aren't necessarily a nerd and you're trying to figure out how to get into college when you get into high school. Um, you have high school counselors, but sometimes they're too busy. So I want to share with you the steps of how to get into college. Um, so my story is I'm a first generation college uh, student. Many of you guys probably aren't. Um, but the issue is that a lot of people are busy. So when you ask your parents or the counselors, they're too busy. So I want to go through a step by step process um, in helping you understand the things that you need to do in order to get into college. So there basically are three steps that you need to follow to get into college. And the first one that you have to do um, is figure out what kind of college do you want to get into um, and, you know, which one do you want to go to? The second is you need to gather up uh, your items to apply. And then lastly, you need to apply. So there's three steps. You need to figure out what kind of college you want to go to. The second is to gather up your items to apply. And then lastly, you just apply. Um, so I'm going to go step by step process so you can understand the each um, process because there are subcategories of a lot of things that you have to do. I just tried to sum it up so that it, it's memorable. So again, you need to figure out what kind of college you want to go to, uh, gather up your uh, items to apply, and then actually just go ahead and do it. So the first one we said uh, we're going to do is figuring out what kind of college uh, you want to go to. So you're going to have to do some self-searching. And there are a lot of things that are going on probably in your mind. You you have to get through high school. You have to, you know, finish your exams. Um, you know, there's homecoming at your school. Maybe you, be, you may have a job or you may play sports. So you might not have that much time, but you absolutely want to invest in the time to figure out what kind of college that you want to go to. Um, one of the first things that you should do is figure out what kind of size of a college do you want to go to. Do you want to um, be in a in a college where there's large classrooms? Maybe there's 500 students and you're okay with that. Or maybe you want your professors to be, you know, available. And so you like smaller classrooms. So you don't want more than maybe 50 or even 20 people in your class. So that is one of um, the biggest things that I think that um, all people should try to figure out is what size college do you think would be a great fit for you? Um, and there's a college out there for everyone. And I, I want you to understand that there is a college out there for you or colleges, and you have many choices. Don't ever let anyone tell you that there um, aren't choices. So I want to figure out the size. Next, um, there's co-ed colleges where there is male, male and females, and also there are single-gendered um, colleges. I um, went to a single-gendered college, so I went to all-female historically black college and university, and I particularly chose it because I wanted to make sure that um, I could feel comfortable and just concentrate on getting an education. I didn't have to fight sexism. I didn't have to fight racism. I could just learn. And so that's why I chose um, Spelman. So you have to figure out the size. And then do you want to go to a co-ed school or a single gendered school? Um, 
And let's see, another factor that you definitely want to um, figure out is your social life. You're going to be away from home, um, possibly, or you might be commuting. So you definitely want to figure out what kind of social life do you need to be happy? Because if you are just going to school, just doing your school and you don't have a social life, that's a disaster um, just waiting to happen. I've seen it where a lot of people, you know, they're just studying this thing and they don't take care of themselves and their social life. And as a result, you know, they don't, you know, they, they just don't do well. Um, so you definitely have to think about your social life. What kind of social life do you want? Do you want to be at a school where there's lots of parties, where there's lots of fraternities and sororities? Um, you know, what kind of partying do you like to do? Is your partying part of, you know, you go to a football game, you tailgate, you like basketball um, games? You need to figure out what kind of social life that you would like. For me, again, I knew that I wanted to be in a place where there were a lot of um, a lot of social activities, but then I could concentrate on my work. Um, so just a little story. When I went to Spelman and I see that some of my other um, Spelman colleagues are on here, or Spelman, Spelmanites are on here with me, um, I would party every Thursday without fail. And the reason why I did so well in school is because I made sure that I partied. You can either go on the deep end and just only party and that's not going to be a um, recipe for success so I made sure that you know I partied every Thursday but then I studied during the week um, uh, another thing that you want to concentrate on is when you're trying to figure out what kind of school should you go to is that you need to figure out the kind of setting that your college um, that you're going to apply to is in. Do you want to be in a college where it's in the city? Or do you need to be in a college where it's in the suburbs to feel comfortable? Or do you want it to be in a rural area? For me, I am from Oakland originally, and I like I wanted something where it was not suburban because I wanted to feel close enough where there was public transportation where I could just get on a train. If I didn't have a car, get on the bus, go somewhere. Um, and I was also starting to think about um, I had to work. Many of you might not have all of the money to apply to, um, or to pay for college. So I want to think about the setting of the college and is are there other things besides that college in the town? And usually if there might not be, there might not be opportunities for you to work. Um, I went, attended Spelman, which is in Atlanta. So there was a mall and there was other things to do besides just being a college town. And so I was able to get jobs. And I always um, worked after my freshman year, at least two to three jobs where I researched for professors. That was my work study. Um, and I made sure that I, I, it was, you know, things get rough and people don't talk about it. Um, I needed to eat. So I made sure that I got uh, a job at a, where did I get it? I, got, I, I made sure that I had a job at a restaurant where every shift I worked, I got a free meal. And so that's how I was able to survive. And so I, um, and I worked at the mall, like I had stated before, but you know, if my car, if I didn't have a car available, I could still jump on the train and go to work and then go to class. Um, so that was very important to me. So you definitely want to make sure that you figure out what kind of college is for you. And you're going to have to do some soul, soul, uh, soul searching and figure that out and be truthful to yourself because nothing would be just really good if you wanted to be at a small college and then you ended up going to a big college and you know that you um, are not necessarily an independent, um, not say, I'm, I'm not saying that not an independent learner, but that you don't reach out to your professors that much. If you're in a big setting and you um, need to get in touch with your professors, you need to be comfortable with that. Um, if you are okay with being in a small setting and you'd like for your professors to possibly, you know, not be your, not be your friends, but kind of hang out with you here and there, um, to talk about life, then you want to be at a smaller school. So you definitely want to do that. Um, and the other thing that you really need to do in order to figure out the kind of college that you need, you want to attend is you want to 
after you figure out, hey, you know what, I need to be in a small city, um, in a small college, or I need to be in a rural area with a big college, like say, um, what's a rural area? I don't know, maybe, well, that's not really a rural area. I was thinking about the University of um, Nebraska. When I first visited, visited at the, um, Lincoln, it was, um, for me, it was a humongous college, but the town was small. Um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of UC Davis in the sense of how large it was. It wasn't really a really big town, so that necessarily wouldn't fit for me because I was just thinking, if I need a job besides work study, there is no mall here. So um, you definitely, after you figure out what kind of college you want to go to and you create a short list, you want to reach out to alum of the school um, and see if you can talk to them so that they could share their experiences with you. Um, they would be able to share their, you know, the nitty gritty of the school, what worked for them, what didn't. Um, and then you could also find out what they're doing now. Are they using the college education that they got? You always have to remember that this is probably the second biggest investment that you'll make in your life besides purchasing a house. So you definitely want to take your time and go ahead and contact alum. Um, see if you can have a conversation, you know, um, go out to Starbucks and see if they'll um, talk to you. Maybe you can do a web chat like um, I'm kind of doing right now. Um, so you can talk back and forth with them. Um, and then... You also go ahead, um, reach out to the alumni office of the college that you want to attend. Sometimes they can tell you who is in your area. And if they don't tell you that, maybe you just leave your information with that office and they'll have an alum contact you so that you can find out more. In order to find out more about the colleges and universities that you want to go to, you want to go to any presentation that they have so that you can talk to recruiters. Usually they also have um, alum in the area that have um, graduated so that you can speak to them. And I know this is definitely a fact because I participated on a lot of panels where um, the colleges that I attended and universities that I attended um, came to the cities. For example, um, Harvard came to Atlanta to do a presentation. So I was available for um, prospective students to talk to and talk to them about my experiences. So you definitely want to, um, you know, do that. The, the second thing that you, oh, not the second thing. And please, 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 please make sure that the colleges that you want to attend are accredited because if they're not accredited then you just wasted your money for nothing and then your degree means nothing um, so that is part of the process and you like I stated before it's not just getting a degree but you're going to college to network with people so you have to think about if you are going to into a profession or you're going to be an entrepreneur or whatever field that you want to go into think about the best colleges that have um, that are known for certain things. So say, for example, um, you want to get into film. I'm going to just talk about the um, the things that I know about. Okay, say so if you want to get into film, you can go to NYU. New York is a good place to do film, but you also have to understand that Atlanta or Georgia is um, starting to be or is the number one place for making movies. So you should absolutely attend college in this area, Georgia, New York, Los Angeles is known for um, film, so you could attend UCLA, um, Morehouse, uh, Spelman, um, Clark Atlanta um, has a radio broadcasting um, thing, so you could get into radio. Um, New York, like I stated before, they have the um, NYU. And let's see, if you wanted to be a veterinarian, you could go to UC Davis. Um, it's known for preparing people to become a veterinarian. Um, Tuskegee, if you want to become a doctor, there's, um, of course, all the Ivy Leagues. And, of course, Spelman and um, Xavier are known for producing doctors. So you have to think about your end goal. And if you don't necessarily know what you want to be, that's okay. So that's why um, you would probably most likely want to apply to a liberal arts school.
or a liberal arts college. And um, in my case, uh, Spelman was a great liberal arts college. Um, let's see, the next step, which is the crucial step, is that after you figured out what kind of school is best for you, you want to go ahead and gather all the items that you need um, to apply. So some colleges are different than others. So for example, I was looking at the UC uh, system. When I say UC, I'm saying the University of California um, system. So like a UC Berkeley, UCLA, they're, um, they don't require recommendations and most colleges do, but big public universities sometimes don't even require that. Some of them don't even apply, um, require their SAT scores, but you want to make sure that you gather all of your supplies so that you or items so that you can apply for college. You will need your transcripts. You will need recommendations. You will need to have taken the SAT or the ACT. Um, definitely, I would probably try to take it before your senior year. If you haven't, that's okay. That doesn't mean that you can't apply. Um, you're just going to put a little bit more pressure on yourself and you have to study for that besides um, your schoolwork. So you have to gather um, that. And then you definitely want to kind of get like a brag sheet together. I mostly um, tell students that I work with to kind of get their resume together with, you know, maybe the jobs or the volunteering that they have done. Um, and then to set yourself apart, you also want to have a LinkedIn um, if possible. And LinkedIn is usually adults use it for business. Um, and it's kind of to network with other people who are in, in your industry or other industries, but it highlights your education and your uh, work experience. So you definitely want to have your resume and in that have the kind, the kind of um, things that you have done in high school. Have you volunteered at your church? Have you volunteered helping the um, feed the hungry and you do that yearly? Are you, say for example, are you a president of a club? Um, and also, did you participate in any sports? So you wanna have that all on your, kind of your resume and your LinkedIn so that people can see. And another big thing like, um, when you're gathering your materials, you want to make sure, you see, you are your own brand. And that is so crucial. I don't, I don't think that a lot of people understand that. So you are your own brand. So you definitely want to make sure that your social media, um, if it's kind of crazy, is cleaned up. Um, some of your maybe sites may, um, can be private. But if you are on social media, that's no problem. But make sure that, you know, um, that it's good stuff. Um, if you are the kind of person who is only always talking negative, if you use curse words all the time, that's not going to be something that the colleges look, um, you know, that they necessarily like. Um, you know, I have a, an example of where, I think it was um, so a few students had gone into a college, they were accepted, but they posted some just um, racist and um, sexist and lots of curse words on their um, timeline. And so their admissions into the college was rescinded. So you definitely want to make sure that your social media is reflective um, of a person who will not only represent yourself, but the other thing is when you're going to a college and university and you get in, the college is thinking, how can this student contribute um, to our college, but then also how can they represent us? So you want to be a good representation of yourself as well as for the, um, for the college. Uh, so let's see what else we have here. Do I have any questions from you all? Hi, Terry. Hi, Kalila. And I'll say, hi, Ms. Hill. Um, well, I had one student. She asked, how many clubs um, should a person be in um, when they are in high school and they're trying to apply to college? It really doesn't matter. However, colleges and universities frown upon, you know, people who are in too many clubs. So, like, if you are a member of 10 clubs, 
what does that say to me as a person who's doing that admissions? I'd say, okay, you can't figure out what you want to do. You're in every single club. That means that you're probably not putting the time and effort into, um, you know, doing the work for each club because you're only one person. So it's kind of better to be um, in a few, I'd say, no more than maybe three or four. And then if you are an officer, um, you know, I, I, let me see. For me, I think I was in, I know it's a lot of five clubs, but I was an officer in, I think in one. So I was like the vice president of um, the Black Student Union at my high school. But I was in like the Model United uh, Nations. Uh, I helped start up the ACLU high school um, club. So you want to make sure that the, clubs that you are in or you're volunteering are meaningful. So it's rather, they look at the quality um, of the clubs and other things that you have participated in. The biggest thing that I've said before is that you are your brand and so you have to tell your story. So many colleges require a personal statement and if they don't require a personal statement, they have questions that they ask you. So this is your time to share with the college, colleges and university who you are. You have to understand they don't get to meet you in person unless, I think there's very few colleges that do an in-person interview, but the first um, time that they're meeting you is from your application. So you want that to embody who you are. So seriously think about who are you and what do you want to do in life? Like. Um, so, you know, and then you make your essay and tell your story about who you are. You don't lie. Um, you just make it authentic um, so that if somebody reads it, they could hear your voice. You don't speak in the third person. You just say I. Um, let me see. I'm trying to think of. Hmm. So I know a lot of people just don't ever start your essay with, hi, my name is. We see it on the application. Just go ahead and share who you are and which you know, your passion is and, you know, maybe why you want to go to college. Um, for me, I was trying to figure it out. I, I already knew that I wanted to be um, an educator. So I was thinking about, seriously, how, what led me to become or want to be an educator. And I was just thinking about the rough um, environment in which people come from in different parts of Oakland where I'm from and how just because they live in a certain neighborhood or go to a certain school that they wouldn't have opportunities um, and how I kind of wanted to change that. And so that's what I wrote in um, my personal statement or my essay to Spelman was about, you know, the things that were going on around me and I was trying to figure out how to, you know, um, help solve the problem. And for me, solving the problem was going to Spelman to study um, history and education so that I could be an educator so that I could help um, young people know that they can do anything that they want and they could change the world. So that was my um, things. So let me go over again the items that you'll have to gather. You'd have to gather your transcripts. You'll have to do um, write a personal statement and or answer questions. Um, you will also have to take your ACT or SAT or both if you choose to have a resume um, and or a LinkedIn, um, clean up your social media and go ahead and before you can do that, you also want to make sure that you have your talk to your parents and this might be uncomfortable. Um, you have to talk to them about their tax return. Um, because this is, that's if your parents, um, most, most families don't have enough money to just straight out pay for college. Um, but if you do, that's great. Um, but you're going to have to talk to your parents about their finances and, um, basically get their information regarding their tax return. So this will, I, the earlier to, to um, you need to talk to your parents about that. The earlier, the better, because, Sometimes parents just don't want to share with you how much they make. But in order to get in college you and apply for financial aid, you need to ask your parents for their financial aid um, or their, um, their tax information. In addition, you may be filing taxes because you have a part-time job. I don't know. But 
So your tax information you'll also need to have so that you can apply for um, financial um, aid. So those are the things that you need to gather. And also, if you are in a situation where you get um, reduced free lunch, um, you can also get a fee waiver for your application fees. There's our, there are application fees. Um, I'm, I'm reading a question that, um, oh, um, am I saying your name right? Anicia um, is asking how many years of tax returns are needed for the financial assistance. You only need one year. Um, so, for example, we are... If we were students today, um, which I know many of you have um, people in your family who are trying to apply for, so we're in the 2017, 2018 school year. You're trying to get into the 2018, 2019 school year. So if you're applying right now and say, pretend you were applying to UC, uh, UCLA, their admissions window opens from November 1st to November t uh, 20th. So the most recent tax return that you're going to have is from the year 2016. Um, and so you'll need that information in order to um, apply for financial assistance. Um, so basically one year prior. And then if you have a situation where your parents' income has changed all of a sudden, um, you, you would add that into it. But again, if you qualify for reduced free lunch, um, or if something has happened, maybe your parents are unemployed, um, you would probably attach addendum to the financial um, aid part of your application. Um, many people don't know, my, my dad actually got um, laid off my senior year in high school and basically the whole town because all of our parents were working in a military town and they shut down the base and that was really scary. Um, but you know what, if you believe in your dreams, you go ahead and do it and you, you'll find a way. So I applied um, and I got in um, and I figured it um, out because I also applied for scholarships. Now, the third thing you have to do um, after you gather all those things is you have to actually apply. There are many people who forget about deadlines. You go ahead and use that Google calendar. Use your your any kind of electronic calendar or real calendar to make a deadline for when you need things done. I suggest that um, you have your um, college applications done at least uh, two to three weeks in advance um, of the deadline so that if there's any changes that you need to make, you can make them. Also, when you have written your essay, don't just rely on your eyes to see if that essay is good. Share it with people that you trust and know um, are, you know, good writers, or maybe that don't even know you that well, so they can see if they can feel who you are from reading um, your personal statements, okay? Um, so again, we have three steps that you need to do in order to get into college. The first is you have to figure out what kind of college uh, you want to go to. Second, you need to gather up your items to apply. And then last, you need to just do it. And when we said what kind of, um, you have to figure out what kind of a college you want to go to, you want to figure out the size, gender of the schools, the social life you need, um, whether or not you want to be in the city, suburban, or rural um, area reach out to alum, go to college presentations. Then you want to gather up your items to apply for college. And so you want to create a list of schools um, that are accredited, um, write down their deadlines and see if they have early admissions. A little tip here is if they have early admission, go ahead and apply. Because sometimes they let you apply for early admissions, say you didn't make it into early admissions, they can apply regular admissions. I applied early admissions to Spelman because that was my dream school. I got in, so I knew by December that I was in, so it was easier, um, but I applied to other schools too. Um, then the last, uh, you want to gather your items to apply. Like I stated before, you want to have your list of uh, schools. You need to have your SAT or SAT um, scores. You need to have your transcripts, recommendations from at least three people, um, your clubs or sports or volunteering on a you know resume, um, and also have a LinkedIn. Um, you need your parents and your tax uh, return, 
and you clearly think about your branding material, your personal statement, your social media, and your LinkedIn. What does it say about you? And last but not least, just apply. See if you can get a fee waiver. And um, you will apply most likely online um, because many people don't have um, paper. And you figure out if they have a hard deadline or they have rolling admissions. And that's it for tonight. And I hope that you all enjoyed. And I'll try to do this at least um, every week around this time. And so if you have any questions that you would like for me to answer or that I didn't get to answer thoroughly, go ahead and write it in the comments. And then I'll um, create a webinar with it. Thank you, everybody, for joining.